The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Since earliest recorded time, man has believed it was possible to see into the future. He has honored and showered gifts on those who purported to be able to unveil the future. However, the Bible has warned against the oracles and soothsayers and threatened them with punishment. In Leviticus 20, 17, we find a man or a woman that divineth by a ghost or a familiar spirit or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. This admonition has not stopped the fortune teller, the reader of palms, or the tarot cards. Our mystery drama, They Shall Stone Them With Stones, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sidney Sloan and stars Terry Keene. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It is a gloomy, rainy day in March. A small, poorly dressed woman makes her way down a debris cluttered street in the poor section of town. Clutched to her breast is a newspaper package which she holds as though it contains all that she holds sacred in this world. Suddenly she stops, realizing that she had passed the entrance she seeks. She turns back and retraces her steps until she sees the garish red-on-black sign in a first-floor window. Madame Darazum. Readings. Palms. Tarot cards. Phrenology. Help in business, love, and life. She eagerly mounts the few stone steps to the entrance and rings the bell. Welcome, Mrs. Fielding. Welcome to my humble house of repose and meditation. Oh, Madame Darazuma, I'm I'm a little late. I'm sorry. Please, no excuses. I foresaw that you would be tardy. Come in, please. This way, into my tent... Tent? I am from a nomadic tribe. My ancestors have always moved over the surface of this earth. Now sit down. Oh, yes. I see you have brought with you the objects I requested, the newly ironed handkerchief. Oh, yes, and, and the orange. Now, I want your mind to accept completely what I have to tell you. Mm-hmm. If you should doubt but the slightest, all will be lost. And I will not be able to help you. Oh, I I don't doubt for a second. That's why I'm here. For you to help me. That's good. I feel the serene elements of the other world seeping into my being. They will guide me in my quest. You are here, Mrs. Fielding. Because in our last meeting, I felt you were in the thrall of an evil presence. Now, you will follow my instructions... To the letter. Yes. Oh, yes. Remember, everything depends on it. I remember. Hand me the orange and the handkerchief. Here. I wrap the orange in the handkerchief. I ask the beings that guide us to place their strength into this instrument, this orange, so that we may understand the nature of your trouble. Now, this orange covered with this handkerchief I place on your lungs, stomach, your brain, your heart. Now, bow your head and ask for help. Help me. Please, help me. Here, take the orange, but do not remove the handkerchief. Place it on the floor beneath your right foot. That's right. Now press down with all your strength. Crush the orange. Crush it. Pick it up. 
Examine it. Examine the orange for signs. What do you find? No. No! No! <laughs> that thing, that ugly thing in the orange, what... What was it? it? It looked like a lizard or a spider or something awful. It was the evil thing that infests your body and your spirit. The powers that I called on revealed it in the orange which you crushed. That, that ugly thing? It was a sign, a sign warning you. You are under an evil spell. Everything you possess is infected with it. Everything? Not only your person, the house you live in. The things you possess. Now, you have savings. Money you've put away. Oh, very little. I, I can't save much on Charlie's salary. How much? Oh, three, four hundred dollars. I have the bank book with me. Here, here, see for yourself. Four hundred fifty-seven dollars and eighteen cents. Oh, we were never much for saving money. I must tell you that your money has a curse on it. You must go to the bank and draw out everything. No, you will draw out just 450 in small bills. You will bring the money here, and I will call on the spirits to wash the evil out of the money. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Your I... money will be completely safe. I will wrap your money in a cloth, sew it up, and give it back to you. Oh. You will take the package of money to your bank and put it in your safe deposit box. Mm -hmm. You will lock the package of money away for one year and 70 days to allow the evil in the money to disappear. And then your money will be clean. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll do that. I'll bring you the money. Now, remember this. This is most important. If you should open the package even one minute before the time is up, the money will turn into worthless paper. Oh, no, I promise. I, I promise I won't touch it for one year and 70 days. You expecting someone? No. Open up! Open up! Police! Uh, what is the meaning of this? Police! You're under arrest. <laughs> Look on her face. She was out the door in record time. My cop impersonation yeah, was perfect. Go ahead and laugh, Harry. Very funny. Your gangbuster entrance did me out of 450 bucks. Save you from a stretch in the pen, you mean. So you're back into that switch the paper for the money racket. Well, better than the creaky old vaudeville act you and I were doing. What was wrong with it? We were a top act. Where? We hadn't worked for three months and I began to get hungry. Dangerous, Emma. Too dangerous for you. For us. We ain't kids anymore. We can't run as fast as we used to. Harry, it's more than just earning a buck. I, I began to have... I don't know, something was bothering me began to feel something inside of me, telling me what was coming next. I was beginning to feel something that I, I never experienced before. Oh, come on. Now, listen. It was a young girl. After we'd gone through all the standard stunts, I suddenly had to speak to her, to warn her. You remember I asked her to come backstage after the performance? Mm, I sort of remember. Well, when I saw her, I knew... That she only had a short time to live. She looked sick. Yeah. Now, on the contrary, there was nothing in her face or manner to reveal it. So? Seven weeks later, she was dead. A malignancy. Even her doctor didn't know it until later. It was then I began to wonder about what I was doing. I just had to get away and think. Well, I got the cure for those half-baked ideas you got in your head. And safer, too. You're coming back into our old act, and that'll keep you too busy to think about how you can really read minds. Harry, if I'd have known what you was going to try and sell me, I would have locked the door. Madam Dara Zoom and Harry Murchison. That act would have been dated in 1910. Let's go, Harry. No, no, no. Pinky. Pinky, you got to listen to me. Why? What's the point? I couldn't sell a cockamaniac like yours. We got something new. Big. Sensational. Yeah, what? Tell him, Emma. Tell him about how you can really see into the future. How you can read mine. Oh, come on. Will you quit wasting my time? It's true, Pinky. Tell him, Emma. You were out to the track yesterday. Yeah, well, what's new about that? I'm out there almost every day. You bet. Fifty dollars on a horse. Ticket number... Three, five, four, one... 
0683. Eighth race. Yeah. How did I bet him? Show. Right. What did he do? He ran out of the money. You lost. Well, I'll... You're right. Absolutely right. See, what I tell you? How did you do it, Emma? You read your mind. All right, let's go. No, no, wait a minute. No, wait. No, wait. Now, you know that wasn't bad. Uh, you can really pull that stunt. Mind reading. The real thing. What have I been telling you? Now, look. There is a spot. Yeah? It's a small nightclub. It's really a roadhouse. What kind of dough? Well, it's a small joint. Money small also. But it's a good place to break in your new act. You could start tonight. What about the money? Harry, hold it. Pinky's right. We got to break the act in. We'll take it, Pinky. Oh, good, great. You know, I got to hand it to you, Emma. You sure knocked me cold with that one. Even my own wife don't know I lost her. She was out in the track with me. Well, I'm sorry to have to shove you out like this, but I got a million people waiting to see me. So look, go out the side door here. Yeah. Okay, I'll, Pinky. I'll see we'll you. be yeah, seeing you. Right. Of course, huh? Bye. <laughs> well, how do you like that? We got a job. And it's only a beginning. How'd you do it, Emma? You really read his mind? <laughs> no such luck. I was sitting next to the wastebasket. I saw the torn stub of a race ticket lying on top of the other waste paper. I could read the amount, date, ticket number, and race without any trouble. The rest <laughs> I just put together. It was a good guess. He wouldn't have thrown the ticket away if he'd won. <laughs> May I have your attention, ladies and gentlemen? Madame Darazoum, known all over Europe and Asia for her great psychic gifts, will entertain you with a demonstration of her powers. I will go among you, and by your concentration and her telepathic skill, Madame Darazoum, blindfolded, will look into your innermost thoughts and perhaps be able to warn of dangers lurking ahead. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Madame Darazoum. Are you ready, Madame Darazoum? I am ready, Mr. Murchison. I am standing next to a person, Madame Darazoum. You are standing next to a lady. You are correct. She is holding a valuable object in her hand. If you had a thought about it, what would you say? The lady is showing you a watch. It is an old watch. One more bit of information. Concentrate. It was given to her by her father, who is no longer living. Thank you, Madame Darazoum. Thank you. Now let us try something more difficult. I am facing an individual. You are speaking with a gentleman. That is correct. Now he shows me something important. Can you identify it for the assembled audience? Wait, I see a small card. Numbers on it. It is a social security card. Correct. Absolutely correct. Can you give us the first three digits? Think. Separate your lines of communication. Oh, I know you can do it. I have a two. Right, go on. I have a seven. Go on, don't stop. I have a zero. The first three digits are two, seven, oh. Wonderful. You are absolutely correct, Madame Darazoum. Wow. No, no, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just a minute, sir, please. No, it's a trick. It's just a trick. You were given her signals. What do you want me to do? Just uh, give me the rest of the numbers on my Social Security card, if you can. Very well. Now, I want you to think of only one thing. The numbers. Okay. I'm thinking. The numbers are... Two... Seven... O... Yeah. O... One... O... Eight... Four... Nine. Is that correct, sir? That's right. Whoa. That is right! Whoa. Thank you. Thank you. Now, for myself and Madame Darzoom, I say good evening. We shall be back for the next... Uh, no, oh, no, there, there's something else. I must speak. Madame Darzoom will be back later. No, I must speak now. Uh, there is a woman 
At the table behind you. Madam Doris, whom you are tired, weary from your telepathic feats, and I... That woman is wearing an opal brooch. Yes, yes. Would you hand the brooch to Mr. Murchison, please? Very well. I'm holding it in my hands. The donor of that brooch is dead. Am I correct? The lady nods her head in the affirmative. You are correct. Wait. The brooch was not given. What are you saying? Reconsider what you were saying. The brooch was taken. The owner of the brooch did not die a natural death. She was murdered. A flash, a momentary revelation. The dark curtain that veils the future and covers the secrets of the heart and mind is flung aside. If only our fortune teller could know what this sudden stab of light in the darkness would do to her own life, she might have hesitated. Might have kept the secret suddenly open to her, closed forever. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. There's an old saying... If you're good, you succeed. If you're too good, you fail. Madame Darazoom and her partner will find out the truth of the old adage. Next morning, they were surprised to find that their act wasn't the smashing hit they had thought it was. Look, there's nothing more we can do. You were fired, canned, thrown out. The owner of the club don't want that kind of aggravation you caused him. I was there, wasn't I? I don't blame him. You gotta admit, Pinky, the act was sensational. Yeah, well, that kind of sensation he don't need. He'll probably have a dozen lawyers sitting on his front door tomorrow morning, suing him for a million bucks apiece. What got into you, Emma? What did you go out of your head or something? Make a statement like that? He couldn't help herself, Pinky. If he gets a message like that, he's gotta get it out. Yeah, well, you're finished after that. And even if you were still saleable, I wouldn't touch you. Too dangerous. What do you mean? Just what I said, dangerous. I mean, if you were right about that woman being knocked off, don't you think the guy that did it is going to be interested in keeping you quiet? Perhaps permanently. Well... Our return to show business had a very short life. Who are you blaming, Emma? Oh, Harry, I'm sorry. I know how much you wanted to get the old act going. You went too far. Could have been a real moneymaker. Huh? No use crying. Better get our clothes back than get out of this hotel. Out of work, we can't afford it. I can always go back to the old fortune-telling racket. Me is the shoe? <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Well... You suggest something. Oh, I'm all out of suggestions, Emma. Uh. Yeah? Someone asked for us? Leave his name? Oh. Hmm. Strange. Okay, if he comes in again, call me. Don't tell him we're in. Just get his name and where we can reach him. Thanks, Eddie. What is it? I don't know. It's kind of got me nervous. Someone looking for us. Why should that make you nervous? Well, you know what Pink said about the guy wanting to keep us quiet. Oh, Harry, come on. You're going to make our lives miserable if we have to keep looking over our shoulders to see who's following us all the time. Well, you are the mind reader. You ought to be able to see what's coming and avoid it. Well, that's the trouble, Harry. It's in and out. Most of the time, I can't see a thing. Oh, what is this? Hello. Harry, this is Pinky. Oh, Pinky. What's up? I just want to tell you, you got more lives than a cat. What are you talking about? The act, it's on again. You mean someone wants us? You're right. Big job. BCB Hotel Syndicate. They got places all over the country, all over the world. Well, they're always looking for racks they can send around to all their spots. Hammer, good news. We're working. When do we start? Tonight. The big shot Gaxton, Wilton Gaxton, head man for the hotel chain, is giving a party out on the island. Car and chauffeur will be sent for you. Can you do it? Can we? <laughs> Pinky, I... 
I don't know what to say. Well, don't say nothing. Just send money. <laughs> oh, well, do me a favor. Yeah? Tell Madame Derezum just the regular act tonight. Stick to the routine. And for goodness sakes, don't ad lib. Uh, welcome to Weatherwell. I've been looking forward to this meeting. Well, thank you, Mr. Gaxton. Oh, please, no formalities. My name is uh, Wilton, Harry. Well, that's great, uh, Wilton. That's the way I like things. Easy, relaxed. And that's the way we're going to have them, Harry. And uh, you are? Emma. Emma? <laughs> Not a very glamorous name. Well, I don't know. It is something of a surprise, considering... Considering my ability to read minds? Well, yes. Maybe that's a bit overrated, too, Mr. Gaxton. Uh, Wilton, please. Look, uh, Wilton, uh, Madam's just being modest. She's really great. Well, that was the impression I got the other night during your performance at the Douglas Inn Roadhouse. We were there. Emma and I... Kind of wondered where you'd caught the act. Oh, I was there. I was very much impressed. It was a truly sensational performance, Emma. Oh, thank you. You flatter me. Uh, isn't it getting rather late to give a performance for your guests? Uh, guests? Yeah. Pinky said you wanted us to come out here and entertain your guests and get another look at the act yourself. Oh, I don't know where your agent got that idea. But he told me you had a big party going, and you... Well, I'm certain that you misunderstood him. Well, what did you bring us out here for, Mr. Gaxton? Let us say that I'm enchanted with your performance, Madame Darazum, and I would like to see it again. Just, just for you alone? Why not? I am paying you. You will be signing a contract in the next day or so. Why shouldn't I request a command performance? You have another reason, haven't you? Is this part of your mind reading act, madam? Are you reading my mind? Uh, no. Well, then, let's get on with it, shall we? Yeah, yeah, showtime. Come on, Madam Darazoom, it's our cue. Thank you, thank you for your kind applause. Now, Madame Darazoum, known all over Europe and Asia for her psychic gifts, will entertain you. Uh, your quarters, I, I think you will find them comfortable. Just one thing. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we'll be wanting to get back to the city. You will be driven back, Harry, the way you came. When does this tour start? I understand we're to visit and play the many hotels on your circuit. I'm not familiar with the arrangements, Emma. Perhaps your agent, uh, Mr. Shears, could brief you on that. All right. We'll talk to him. Yeah, Pinky uh, should know. Then I shall bid you good night. Oh, uh, Mr. Gaxton? M yes? You asked us to go through our act tonight for you alone. Well, why not? I... I wanted to see what I was buying. When we finished, you gave us no indication of your feelings about it. You didn't applaud. You didn't even smile politely. Were you disappointed? Well... You were disappointed. Frankly, madam, yes. Now, look, how can we be expected to do a decent job with no audience? You know, to a performer, an audience is all important. It makes all wait the Wait a minute, wait. You're being too defensive, Harry. I wasn't too disappointed in the act. I was just a bit put off that Madame Darazoom didn't pull any surprises. Like she did the other night? Yes. <laughs> I'm glad she did. Pinky, he specifically warned her not to pull any surprises. Oh, I see. But it was that which sold me on your act. It was the part I found attractive and fascinating. Well, now, good night. How do you like that? Pinky wants us to keep the act under control. Gaxton only buys the act because you nearly cause a riot. And you guess... I don't believe Mr. Gaxton is saying everything that's on his mind. I'm not absolutely certain. But he's concealing something. Yes. It has something to do with the old pal brooch. He's mixed up in that business. Or it could be... I'm not completely sure, but... Why don't you say it, Harry? Murder. Emma, you awake? Yeah. Nearly seven, isn't it? Just. I haven't slept a wink. 
I've been running the whole thing over and over in my mind. The little shiny iron ball rolling around in my head like a pinball machine. What do you come up with? Tilt. Just don't believe it. What I've been wondering about is what relationship was the woman with the brooch to Gaxton? Look, let's stop playing cops. We're only a couple of performers trying to make a buck. We are not the police. We have nothing to gain and plenty to lose by kicking this out into the open. Yeah, I agree. What's more, it'll kill the job. The contractor working the hotels he heads up. We'd be crazy to burn up our own meal ticket. Mm, you're right, Harry. We'd be crazy to do it, but something tells me we have no choice. What do you mean, no choice? We keep out of it. No nothing. Somebody asks. Harry, if Gaxton is implicated, he won't wait. He won't give us a chance to play it anyway, but his way. His way? Look, we know something, or he thinks we do. We're in trouble. Yeah. Better get dressed. We're getting out of here. How? We're supposed to get a ride back, aren't we? We're not waiting. Hello? Hello? Who are you calling? Going to get a taxi. There must be a local taxi company out here. Start packing. Hello? Hello? Phone's dead. Look, let's not pack. Let's just leave. I'm with you. Come on. Door won't open, Emma. Well, turn the key. No key. You're so upset, you can't even... Here, let me try. I told you, the door's I'll locked. Go the window. Three-story drop, not even a vine or a tree near enough. Someone at the door. Who is it? Uh, good morning. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah, fine, just fine. Let him in. Can't. Door's locked. Uh, Mr. Gaxton, we can't open the door. It's locked. Locked? Oh, it doesn't seem to be locked. Why did you lock us in, Gaxton? What? What are you saying? The, the door isn't locked. We tried the door. We couldn't open it. Well, it's open now. Because you opened it. Uh, from the tone of your voice, you are accusing me of having locked you in. And cutting off our phone. Cutting off your... Oh, yes, yes. Oh, the phone was off. Charles always cuts all the phones after midnight. You see, I suffer from insomnia. And if the phone should wake me, I have great difficulty getting back to sleep. You have an answer for everything, don't you? I assure you that it is the truth. Charles always puts it on again by uh, 7 a.m. Well, happens to be 5 after 7 right now. Let's just see how efficient Charles is. It's working. Phone's on. You see? Mr. Gaxton, we want to leave. Now. Right now. Can we have your car to take us to a, a train, a bus station? Well, now, something seems to be wrong. Why are you behaving so antagonistically towards me? L last, last night, night we... we discovered a lot of things. Such as... Harry, don't say anything. Suddenly, your attitude has changed. Your conversation full of hidden meanings and innuendos. Now, come on. Come here. What's bothering Harry, you? Harry, don't say anything. I got it, Emma. Mr. Gaxton, we think you hired us because you thought we knew something about the murder. The murder Madam spoke about in our act the other night at the nightclub. Go on. We, uh, we've decided to go to the police. Whatever for? You really know the murderer? We think we do. Maybe you do, too. What? <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's very funny. It sounds as though you're accusing me of murder. In the lexicon of professional mind reading, rule one, to which Madame Darazum had always adhered, was that one had to be relatively certain before making a prediction. Harry's blurted out accusation of Wilton Gaxton violates that rule. She was anything but certain of his guilt or his motives. And there is now in the back of her mind a feeling that nothing but disaster can result. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. After their break with Wilton Gaxton, Madame Darazum and Harry Murchison were driven back to the city by the Gaxton chauffeur. 
Harry was troubled by the situation which he felt he had caused by his ill-considered accusation of the man who at first had been so kind to them and then seemed so threatening. The question in Madame Darazum's mind was equally unanswerable. No gleam of light penetrated the darkness. With great reluctance, they both decided to present the matter to the police. Now, what you're saying could be very damaging, Mr. Murchison, and consequently could bounce back and cause you and your wife a lot of trouble. We told you what happened, Lieutenant, exactly as it happened. Yeah, yeah, your story is very interesting, but unsubstantiated. I mean, you've got to have facts, not a hocus-pocus vaudeville performance. Madame Darazoom can read mine. I'm familiar with your act, and also with your records. I don't think anything you two would say in court would cause too much excitement. You're saying we're lying, that this whole business is just a stunt. Publicity, that's what you want, isn't it? I mean, it's uh, good for the act. Oh, Harry, come on. The only thing that would get this cop off the seat of his chair is to find us both shot through the head on the front steps of the precinct station. (laughs) Well, that would make it simpler for me. But seriously, let me lay it out for you. You are accusing Wilton Gaxton, a prominent man. Rich, powerful, with a license to kill. That's what you mean, isn't it? No. Now, damn it, you've wasted enough of the department's time. And I've been very patient with you. You haven't a shred of evidence. All you have is what Madame cooks up in her mind-reading act. And with your past police records, do you think anyone would give the slightest credibility to anything you could say? Sorry to have wasted so much of your valuable time, Lieutenant. Come on, Harry. was a waste of time. You wanted to go to the police, Harry. I knew what the answer would be. Let's grab a taxi and get back to the hotel. We've got to check out before one o'clock or we're stuck for an extra day. And with our bankroll, don't you think a bus would be more sensible? Taxi! We haven't got time for the bus. Taxi! Taxi! Get in, Emma. <laughs> Shelburne Hotel driver. Well, what's our next move, Harry? We gotta get lost. Run, hide, anything. I'm not the mind reading half of the act, but I can feel something. I don't like the way it feels. Where? Where can we go? We gotta make a buck. If only we could have gotten an advance on the job with Gaxton. Yeah, if. Maybe Pinky was smart enough to get an advance. No good. He'd have to give it back to Gaxton if we weren't gonna take the job. Job? What job? There never was one. It was only Gaxton's way of getting us, setting us up for the knockout. Get that car, alongside. Look out, there's a gun! <laughs> Hey! Stop! Stop! He's been shot! Oh, help me! Help me! My husband's been shot! Well, when did the doctor say he'd let you out of the hospital, Murchison? I could have gone out yesterday afternoon, but I didn't want to leave. Not without police protection, Lieutenant. Remember just yesterday when we talked to you, you said it was a publicity stunt? Twenty minutes later, Harry had a bullet in his shoulder. Lucky thing that bullet wasn't a few inches over. All right, I was wrong. I admit it. Hey, he admits it. Guy has to get nearly killed before he gets any notice from the cops. Okay, you want police protection, you got it. What about Gaxton? You're going to pick him up? And lose my job? We haven't got a thing on him. Oh, here we go again. Hey, Harry! Harry, Emma, take a look at those newspapers. Oh. You've got coverage in every one. One page. Mystic reads mind, get shot. Oh, and here, 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 look at this one. Mind of killer, unmasked by seer. We saw all the papers, Pinky. Oh, yeah, sure you saw them. But do you know what this means? It means some nut is trying to kill me, that's what it means. I don't think it was you he was after, Harry. I'm certain that it's Madam here who's being hunted. Who's this? Oh, Pinky, I'd like you to meet Lieutenant... Uh, McCloskey, Edward McCloskey. Mr. Shears, our agent. Uh, how yeah, do you how do you now, Mr. Yeah. Shears, you started to say something and you were interrupted. Something like, uh, you know what it means. Yeah, but I was going to tell my clients that I have been simply deluged with office. Folks, if I could just get you out of that Gaxton deal, I could get you three times what he offered you. Don't worry about Gaxton, Pinky. We wouldn't work for him if he gave us Fort Knox. We haven't signed anything and we won't. Oh, great. Then I've got a job for you. Starts tonight. Pinky, hold it. What? We're not working for anyone. We just want to get away. I don't get it. Look, just say we're allergic to getting killed. Someone's out to get us. He missed the first time. Maybe the second time his aim will improve. With police protection, what could hurt you? And the fact that there are cops around makes it even better. You know, authentic. It's a natural. No. Wait a minute. I want you to take the job. What? 
Take it. It's the best thing you could do. The killer, if there is a killer... Do we have to go through all this all over again? Okay, okay. The killer will want to have another chance at you. He must be worried that you know something about him. I'll give you complete coverage. And when he makes his try, we'll be there to nab him. So I'm to be the bait in your mousetrap, Lieutenant. Can you give me a better plan? Oh, do it, Emma. Harry, I tell you, it's a great idea. Oh, spoken like a true agent, Pinky. You've got nothing to lose, not even your 10%. Well, what do you say, Harry? Well, all right. Good. Why not? Better than going around wondering when it was going to happen. This way, it'll force it. When do we start, Pinky? Tonight. The bait is ready for the trap, Lieutenant. Better be sure you're ready to capture the rat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there is an element of danger lurking here tonight. The great Madame Darazoum has, through her incredible psychic vision, uncovered a killer. This killer has not been apprehended. Madame Darazoum is the only one in the world who can point the finger at him. And he will try to prevent this at any cost. Please notice that my right arm is in a sling. The killer fired at Madame in a moving taxi just 36 hours ago. Fortunately, I was able to keep Madame Darazoum from harm. And now, friends, the one, the only, the incomparable Madame Darazoum. Oh, you're a smash, Emma. Yeah, well, I'm exhausted. The strain was just too much. But he didn't show. I was watching all through the act. I didn't feel he would, actually. Not through the performance. Police all around? Yeah, street clothes. All trying to look like customers. Hey, you know who came in while you were doing the last reading? Gaxton. Right. I didn't want to let on to you for fear you'd get nervous and blow the act. But you were blindfolded. I felt him enter. He sat way in the back near the exit. That's right. The human radar was working tonight. Yes. Something else. I felt a warning, a flash of danger. And it's still there. Look, Emma, the lieutenant's still around. All his men, too. Gaxton wouldn't try anything. No, I suppose not. I just can't help feeling... Yes? It's Lieutenant McCloskey. May I come in? Oh, sure, Lieutenant. Come in. Ah, thanks. Thanks. Good show tonight, madame. Thanks. Uh, All tricks, nothing supernatural, but a good show. What do you know, Lieutenant? She knew that Gaxton was in the audience tonight, even though she was blindfolded. Amazing. Okay, okay. I won't try to convince you again. Gaxton was spoken to and asked to leave immediately after the performance. I sent a man with him to keep him company. Thanks, Lieutenant. I can breathe easier now. Yes, is Madame Dara Zoom there? Harry, I don't want to see anybody. Get rid of her. Leave it to me. I'm sorry, but Madame Dara Zoom is tired after her. Well, I'd uh, better be rounding up my men and getting out of here. Thanks for your attention, Lieutenant. Uh, look, we'll have a man stationed at the hotel for the next couple of days, or at least until we feel you'll both be safe. I appreciate that. Emma, this dame out there, she's from the trade papers, wants to do a short interview. Well, tell her to come to the hotel tomorrow. No time. Has to have it tonight. The deadline's tonight. Oh, all right. I'll keep it short. Send her in. Uh, come in, Miss, uh... Mrs. Rossard. Uh, Mrs. Owen Rossard. How do you do, Mrs. Rossard? Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Well, I'll be going along now. Speak with you tomorrow. Thanks, Lieutenant, for all you've done. I think I'll walk out with you, Lieutenant. Be back in a minute, Madam Darazoum. Now, what can I do for you, Mrs. Rossett? You can die, Madame Darazoum. What? Don't you know me? You addressed your remarks to me just a few short days ago. Perhaps this opal brooch will refresh your memory. And this gun will wipe out the picture forever. Wait, wait. Look, you won't get away. The place is full of police. They're all gone now. The lieutenant was the last one here. His car was waiting outside. He'll be gone, too. Please, I know nothing about you. I I had a brief, cloudy picture. That's past, gone from my mind. Too late. You know too much. You know I killed my stepmother for her money. She'd lived too long, the miserly old witch. 
And now I shall kill you, so you won't be able to tell the world. No, you'll be caught. You'll go to prison. <laughs> They'll just send me back to that place. You see, I have a record of mental illness, so I can kill and get away with it. Now, die, Madame Durham! <laughs> <laughs> The doctor says the wounds were both superficial. You'll be out of here inside of a week. Looks like you and I are playing more time in hospitals than on the boards. Oh, I think our trouble is over. They got that Rosset dame and she's back in the sanitarium. For good this time. Oh, and I didn't tell you. Why? We're out of a job again. Seems we caused too much excitement. Sounds like the story of our lives. I must be the doctor. Said he'd be around to see me. Come in. Mr. Gaxton. Uh, still afraid of me? No. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry about that. You see, we... Uh... Water over the dam, no hard feelings. Uh, what I want to know is, have you spoken to your agent, Mr. Shears? No. Oh, then you haven't signed the new contract I've had drawn up for you? But... No buts. I want your act. And the contract will run for two years with options for renewal, twice the money, and no cancellation clause. What do you say? In all her predictions, her projections into the future, Madame Darazum had not seen even the hazy outlines of her own life and future career. Now it was being presented to her in rosy detail by a man whom she had doubted and feared. She would have been the first to acknowledge the fallibility of her divining. I'll return shortly. In Deuteronomy... 1819, the Bible warns us again. There shall not be found among you anyone that useth divination, a soothsayer, or an enchanter, or a sorcerer, or a charmer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. But despite these warnings... There are many in the world who cannot resist the temptation to delve into the unknown. Our cast included Terry Keene, Jackson Beck, Arnold Stang, Bryna Rayburn, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams? <laughs> <laughs>